Hi, I'm Terry Smart from Chestnut Products and today we're going to do something just a little bit different from our other videos. Up till now we've been working on turned items on the lathe but today I'm going to be working on these tables. Now these uh, have been brought in from home and as you can see they've had better days and it's a source of amusement for friends when they come round. Because if you work for a finishing company they really should look better than that. And they're right, so today I'm going to try and rectify that. Now because there are three tables, I'm going to finish each one in a slightly different method. All of them are suitable for use on a table, so uh, we'll get cracking with that straight away and see where we get to. Now I've cut down a piece of Velcro compatible abrasive, mounted it onto a pad and I'm going to start off here. So as you're doing this, the, uh, the abrasive is going to get clogged up with the old coating. So just quickly rip it off, give it a little flex, and it'll soon remove all the, uh, all the stuff that's clogging it up. So you can carry on with it. Okay, so I've sanded back now and I've uh, gone through the grits from 80 to 120, 180 to 43, 20 and finishing off with the 400 grit in the net abrasive because the, uh, the Velcro backed abrasive doesn't go up to 400 grit so I thought I'd just do the same for all the tables, make sure they're all up to 400 grit. Need to make sure before I do anything else that the surface is as clean as possible. To do that I'm going to use one of our tack cloths, been saving it in one of the uh, airtight jars there. Let's give that a wipe over make sure that all the dust, anything that's uh, been put on there is removed. So we've got a very nice clean surface ready for finishing. Now the sanding process has removed the colour from the table so I need to stain it back to somewhere close to the original colour. To do that I'm going to use one of our spirit stains and I reckon the mid oak colour is going to be pretty much spot on to get us a good match to where we were in the first place. So we'll pour some of that into, the, into this beaker, don't need too much of it. And very importantly, put the lid back on before we do anything else. And I'll put that out of the way. And at the same time, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to grab a couple of uh, our vinyl gloves, put those on, try and stay clean. So I'm going to load up the brush, a little bit of stain, and start applying that. With a spirit stain you need to work fairly quickly, get to cover the whole item. You will sometimes see brush marks where you've overlapped, that's not a problem. The trick is to be fairly, fairly generous with the amount you put on, so that you can see that the stain's still wet, still giving you uh, those brush mark effects. Make sure the whole piece is covered and then get a cloth, just wipe off all the surplus and that will give you a nice even finish and a nice even colour. There we go, perfect and a great match as well. So the table is the right colour again now and what we need to do is put a coating on there to protect it and keep it looking good. For this one I'm going to use the hard wax oil. It's a blend of oils, dries clear, dries very hard wearing as well, gives a great surface, ideal for an occasional table like this. And it's quite a thick liquid, so it gives a very high build. A couple of coats of this will build to a gloss very quickly. When you use it, give it a shake first just to make sure everything's mixed in properly. And as it comes out, it's a slight amber colour, but that dries clear very quickly. So I'll put that back away. Using a foam brush as I'm doing for most of the application on these uh, tables today, just because it gives them a nice smooth finish. So we'll load up the brush. Now the hard wax oil uses a different solvent to the spirit stain. So there's no fear of it lifting the stain and making it run. You can see how putting a coating on, in this case the hard wax soil, lifts the wood and really makes the grain come alive. 
We've given this table four hours to dry now and it's, uh, it's completely dry and I'm going to put another coat on there. Before I do that, just going to give it a quick rub back with the, uh, with the orange Niweb. Remember, preparation is one of the most important parts of finishing and that includes your intercoat preparation. You want to make sure you've got as smooth a surface as you can before the next product goes on. So just give this a quick rub back. And I've used the orange Niweb on this one simply because I'm not really cutting through anything. I just want to make sure we've denibbed the surface and got a really smooth finish on there. So back to the hard wax oil, still with the foam brush. And this time I'm starting in the middle, picking up the line and going out to the edge. So we get a good coverage right out to the edge without any extra brush marks showing. So I'll just check that that's fully covered. No obvious brush marks on there. Any, anything that needs to be sorted out should be done at this point while the oil is still wet. Remember that the, by and large, the appearance that you have on the surface now is what the oil is going to look like. So that's absolutely fine. I'm happy enough with that. Just take a little bit there. So I'm now going to put this to one side, let that dry uh, three or four hours, and uh, we'll put a picture up at the end with the other tables showing what it looks like. And now it's time to start on the second table. This time around, I'm going to be using our net back abrasive. It's still Velcro compatible, so it mounts on the block very well. Make sure that's firmly attached, and we can start on this one. As with the first table, I've sanded this down now to 400 grit, so it's a lovely and smooth surface. So we'll give it a quick wipe over with the tack cloth, make sure we've removed all the dust. Not a great deal on there to be honest, but we just make sure it's all gone. Then it's on with the gloves. Using the same colour, the mid oak has proven to be a fantastic match. And of course the beauty of the spirit stain is that being so quick drying, it doesn't raise the grain again. So that lovely smooth surface that we've created is going to stay that smooth. So that's the mid oak going on. And once again being slightly over generous with the coating, with the stain, to make sure that we get a good coverage. Not going to worry about the overlaps because that's why we wipe it down with the cloth afterwards. There we go, lovely even colour, no problem at all. Spirit stains dry. Only takes a couple of minutes really, but we've left it just a little bit longer to be 100% certain of it. And on this table, I'm going to use the acrylics, starting off with the acrylic sanding sealer to give a great base coat, and then I'm going to follow that up with the acrylic lacquer. The acrylic sanding sealer needs a shake before you use it, so give that a quick shake first. And I'm going to put it into this beaker just to make the using it a bit easier. Applying it with the foam brush again, and the, the beauty of the acrylics is being water-based, there's no solvent in there that's going to lift the stain and make it move, so we don't need to be quite so careful with the application. Foam brush, perfect for application. Acrylics have a tendency to froth up slightly. The foam brushes pretty much reduce that to a complete minimum. It goes on very quickly. It's a milky liquid in the, in the beaker, but when you apply it, it comes out completely clear. 
we've left this a couple of hours. The acrylic sanding sealer is dry now. So sanding sealer, just gonna give it a quick cut back with the red Nyweb, 600 grit. Make sure we've got a lovely smooth surface. Again, the importance of getting the timber as smooth as possible can't be overestimated, can't be overstated. So need to make sure we get that right. And that's done the job perfectly. Remember a sanding sealer is designed to be sanded so it works very easily. On this one, having put the acrylic sanding sealer on, it's completely compatible with and really designed to be used with the acrylic lacquer. So that's what we're going to put on top of this. Visually a very similar lacquer, a very similar product. It looks much the same, white in the, t in the jar, but it will soon dry out to a very clear finish. Again, the foam brush for application gives a lovely brush mark free application. And at the same time, eliminates any frothing that the uh, lacquer wants to do. Two down, one to go. And I'm just gonna carry on using the net abrasive on the small table. And as with the other tables, I've sanded this one back to 400 grit again. Lovely smooth surface. Give that a quick wipe over the tack cloth. and then we can stain it with the spirit stain. As well as not raising the grain, the spirit stain is very quick drying, so it means you can work on and carry on very quickly afterwards. And also, very importantly, the spirit stain is based on very fade resistant pigments, so it will retain its color for a very long time. And that's the same for both the rainbow range and the wood range, which is what I'm using here. So on goes the mid oak stain. For this table, I want to finish it with the melamine lacquer. Now, I need to be careful because the melamine lacquer has a solvent similar to the one in the spirit stain, and it can lift it, cause it to move, cause it to run, and it could spoil the effect of the, uh, of the color that we've achieved. So the best way to apply it is using the aerosol version, the melamine gloss lacquer. This hits the surface, dries, and because there's no mechanical contact, because there's no brush or a cloth dragging across, it's not gonna move the stain. But before I can apply this, I need to seal the wood. And I'm gonna do that, of course, with the cellulose sanding sealer. This also shares the same type of solvent as the, as the melamine lacquer and the spirit stain. So to make sure that this doesn't move the stain, I'm gonna spray this one as well. So we give it a good shake and make sure that the, uh, the sanding agent in there is mixed in properly as well as the propellant. And spraying from around about six to 10 inches away. You move across to give a nice even coating. The cellulose sanding sealer is dry now, only takes about five minutes. So we're ready to go on and uh, carry on working with it. We need to smooth it down first before we do anything else. Uh, does have the sanding agent in there that does need to be denibbed. And to do that, I'm just gonna use one of our red webs. So we're cutting back at around about 600 uh, grit. Sanding agent makes it really easy to work with. Doesn't take a lot of work. And there we go, that's done. That's, uh, that's complete. And I'm just gonna give that a quick wipe over with the tack cloth. Make sure we haven't left any dust behind. 
That's great. And the melamine gloss lacquer is the ideal top coat for the cellulose sanding sealer. You can put most things over the top of the cellulose sanding sealer, but this is the one it's really designed to be used with. Just move the nibra pad out of the way. Again, a good shake. We're not mixing any solids in here. We're mixing the propellant in to make sure it's going to spray properly. Now when you spray an aerosol on a flat surface, always start spraying just slightly before the edge of the piece and spray until just after the edge of the piece. You get a more even coverage that way. If you try to spray as a continuous route, uh, just stopping and starting on the edges, then you end up putting slightly more on the edge and then you don't get such a good result. Put a second coat on. There we go. Going to leave that another 10 minutes. First coat of melamine lacquer is dry. We're going to give that a very quick cut back. And because I want to get the maximum protection that I can for the table, I'm going to put a second coat of the melamine on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the table round. So I want to make sure I get an even coverage of it with the aerosol. So I put that there. Quick wipe over the uh, tack cloth again. Now we've got extraction running in here. So to make sure that we're not uh, overdoing it with the fumes from the uh, melamine. When you're doing this in your workshop, do make sure that you've got adequate ventilation for it. It's not wildly harmful. Do observe the warnings on the can, but do try and make sure that you've got some good ventilation going as well. So a quick shake and away we go. Nice even coats overlapping each time. Let's go over once more, make sure we're fully covered. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, exercise in table refinishing. And we're gonna put up some pictures in a minute of the three tables together so you can compare them and just see that hopefully the finish that we've got of them visually is pretty much the same even though we know that they're different methods. It'll be great if you like and subscribe to our channel, please. It really makes a difference to us. And uh, we'll be back, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.